The 19th century mining town of Cerro Gordo is tucked in the Inyo Mountains outside Lone Pine. And look at this baby. It is up for sale. It can be yours for the bargain price of $925,000. There are almost two dozen buildings. There's a church, a saloon, a historic hotel called the Belshaw Bunkhouse, also a hoist house and a superintendent's house. We should mention that Cerro Gordo is considered a ghost town. Kind of makes it sound even cooler. The property has been in the hands of the same family for decades. And what a great name, Cerro Gordo. Gordo. It's worth it for the name alone. Do you have running water there? It doesn't look like it, though. <laughs> yeah, you might have to truck in your water. <laughs>
Center to the right. That that gets really mazy and keeps going. So next time. This goes to yeah, right. see the rotten timber. Yep. And this pipe is all rotten and corroded away. You want to go check out the other direction? Uh, all right, we got another exit sign pointing into that. I don't know. Once you get out of the main shaft, the timber is all garbage. So here's an example of what water can do to timbers over time. These looks like some good timbers, right? Big and thick. Have a little bit of water in them though. A lot of time, and this is what happens. Right into it. Big, but the strength of toothpicks. Still good airflow blowing at us. This is one of those low budget 1800s mines where as you get down towards the end of the drift, the ceiling gets smaller and smaller. That's a face right there, right? Yeah, that's the face. Let's go this way. Jeez, what a... Oh, so this is, uh... This is never be seen, never before seen footage. Not that you're seeing anything special, but that's a face too, right there. Never before seen footage. Here's something a little interesting. Calico genuine volcanic ash for barbecue. Really? Listen to that bass. Boom. So this is the direction that says exit. And I don't know about this. Not real interested. Check out this old miner's cup. Very classy, very classy. It's probably from the 1800s anyway. Exit there pointing back towards the main drift we came in. And we got a split here, goes two different directions. Uh, let's go this way. Interesting, so this must be the man way to the next level down. Maybe it was the man way. that was but it looks like it failed I 
I bet this had water running out of it at one time. And again, total failure. All right, danger area. I'm sure that is M. Shaw and uh, OSHA approved. So, this is like an old powder magazine slash carbide. I'm not going to walk too deep in here, but you can see it looks like it spilled some carbide. It's so humid in here, I'm sure it's off-gassed all of its acetylene already. Wow, old school. Old school balls, then? 100 watt. Yeah, GE, and this one's a different, this one's different. Nothing on the top. All right, so this is a 400. We're on the 400, and um, there's a hand crank winch here and this was obviously a winds that went down here along these maybe they were using these two pipes as rail is that what we're thinking no these are just junk planks these could have been could have been for air these or water sure. yeah but we think under this collapse is a hole that goes you down know, when you guys come over here clip into rope like over there okay yep this understood <clears throat> so we're gonna go check out oh. this hoist yeah. so an over quick overview of this level a uh, lot of collapse every drift i every direction ends pretty much in a collapse except one where i hit the face um stope rotten wood there's rotten wood below all the stopes very few artifacts no big equipment uh, a few signs very little to write home about so far. Okay. So we're on the 400 level. We've found a hand crank hoist just about 20 feet up here to show a picture of. And this area used to have a wood A-frame, but over the years it's eroded away, completely gone, and it's all fallen right here. And this is where the hole is. It's since been covered up, so we're going to stay away from this area. Yeah, this, this is... whole thing eroded away. Maybe you could demonstrate how, what good shape that wood is in. Just two hands, two fingers. Just right apart, just gone. Completely. Yeah, that's the break. What does this do? I don't know. Yeah, this is the break, this wraparound band. This is an emergency break of some sort. Or, or just a stop. For but I, don't like, I think this is for locking it off. So it doesn't come out. Yeah. It could be. Yeah, so if this comes back, like, yeah. But this is a problem, though. It doesn't go. It hits mm -hmm. that. We need to ask the... Uh, Where's the technician? Joshua Hindi Company or whatever. So we're still at the 400 level. Um, we found this manway. We can't really tell how far it goes, but we're belaying two people down right now. Um, it's 150 feet to the next level, which is the 550 level. And everything seems to be clear and great ladders. And so they're belaying each other down and we're gonna take the shaft down to the 550 and meet them there. Shaft. Oh, nice. All right, we're in a manway. 
here comes Travis and the manway continues down we got basically 150 feet to the next level so I like manways a lot more than I do shafts it's a personal preference 100% cribbed all right are we rolling came down right here and what a freaking amusement park yeah i am but i think we might be boxed in behind collapses but come on down uh copy that you want to hang there for a few minutes yeah i'll do that all right yeah the ladder was partially sketchy but yeah here's where we came down look at that old hemp rope god and uh um look at this old wheelbarrow here this is something mice haven't set on for in a hundred years so Anyway, there's a bunch of stuff stored here. Who knows what kind of artifacts you could find in that if you wanted to dig through it. That's a face. That's freaking fuse. There's the ore chute from the sub-level above us. And I guess what I should do is follow this pipe. This pipe would head back towards the main shaft. And ore core samples. And he's a... Uh, so yeah, the pipe heads right into the collapse. <sighs> Bummer. So that heads back towards the main shaft, and that's caved right there. So, danger area. The only hope is if this was to loop back around. And yeah, that is a danger area. So I wonder if this, oh, we got some airflow here. So this is that collapse. This is plugged with I could get through that and that does look like that collapse. Let me get through that. All right. Look at that. That's collapsed. I believe that I'm blocked off from the main shaft. And it is wet and rotten down here. And yeah, there's water dripping in. Keeps going. <sighs> All right. Continuing on the 550 level. Look at the way this snakes around in here. There's some gobbing, some fill. But I don't think I'm... Yeah, this is it. Everything runs into a collapse. 
So I'm on the back side of I'm on the back side of the the collapse from the shaft. So I guess I'm going to be the only one to ever document this. That's for sure. And it's interesting how there are parts of this that are wet and parts of it that are dry. Look at that. Failing timbers. So now I gotta figure out how the hell No, I'm good. Uh, I'll go right up that ladder. Okay, um, just make sure. Let me let me pull the rope up at least so you don't get it snagged, will you? Copy that. Let me finish this video and then I'll be right over there to to untie the knot. Copy. All right, 550 level. No way to. No way to get to this level from the shaft, the actual shaft station anymore. Uh, the shaft station would be that direction. And also this loops around here and would go back to the shaft station. And e every way you go, it's just collapsed. I mean, right, right here, there's like a column of bad ground between me and the actual shaft. So yeah, I came down the manway on the back side of the collapse. So uh, uh I'm I'm the only one to see this in probably a hundred years, and I doubt anyone will ever see this again. This is uh deep. Farmer Brothers Coffee, Hills Brothers Coffee, the hand just is disintegrating in my, can is disintegrating in my hand as I touch it, anyway, here's a pair of shoes, I know. <sighs> Would you say American Rubber Company made? In oh yeah. Yep. All right, we're headed down the. 550 and here's the exit which I came down this is from the shaft station side and we're headed towards the collapse the wet area that I came down on the back side of all right well it kind of looks like it's we're getting towards the this is the wet area see this is what I mean see how it's dripping Hey, Rick. Good. 
So, yes, I was on the other side of that right there. As soon as he gets off the phone, maybe we can hear the dripping in here. Did you hear the dripping over here? No. You didn't hear it dripping? Yeah, so I was on the back side of this right here. So we were both trying our radios here to see if we can get a hold of you. I could hear something breaking through, but I thought it was Travis. There's another shovel head. So did you follow through here? Yeah, it's just collapse after collapse after collapse. It's just in bad shape. It's wet, it's dripping. The need oil can. This is a 550 shaft station. And Snorsh on McNardles is there. What? Something's up with you. You're getting tired. I'm tired, yes. Okay, so it's, I guess okay. Yeah, all right, okay. Yeah, that's been knocking down all the rock I can. Okay. All right, uh, I'm gonna untie you, get on equipment and such. Yeah. All right. I got the other sling. Huh? Got the other sling? Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. All right, my man. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, you might want that. All right. Here we go. All right. That kind of rack is easier to drop bars on, which is nice. Yeah. It's the mini rack you can't really drop other than the hyper bar. Yeah, because you can't pull the rope out, right? Right, well, and it only, you end up with like two bars, so it'll, one will pop off, so you end up with like just two bars at that point. Then that's not good. Yeah. That's not enough. Yeah, I kind of like this thing. It's working pretty good. Yeah. Cool, right. yeah, that seems like a good choice. See you guys. All right. See you on seven. Ego tripping is an act or course of action that enhances and satisfies one's ego. Ego is closely related to fear. Ego is what you experience when you're afraid of burning yourself. That's a confession that you're firewalking on your own steam, walking by self-will. You've taken on 100% responsibility for the results of your firewalk. It's useful to have a healthy respect for the ego. Ego is like the red light on the dashboard of your car, warning that the brakes are on. Obviously, you don't want to move the car until you take the emergency brakes off. You also don't want to step into the fire until your ego is in check. When your mind is focused on walking on fire, it's best to let go of an egocentric attitude. You can only pay 100% attention to one thing at a time. You're either into ego or into a focused mind. Okay. Right. Welcome to the 700. Oh, yeah. 700 feet straight down. Oh, it's a slusher ramp. That's a slusher ramp right there. They rolled the bucket under that, and then they pushed the ore up on top of it. Interesting. Uh, Norman just blew it, dude. Norman, we were going to all wait and eat lunch first. Oh, all right. Back here. Bring on the surprise. Eat with us. No, I don't know if there's any water. I haven't looked. All right, we'll come. Don't quit. Look, come on. Go, go get the that's, a free, that's a free soldier pistol. Oh. Ah. 
That's a good point. 700 level. I got like five copies. So this is the 700 and this is where the water supply. So that's a no go through there, huh? That's Travis hanging out in the slusher ramp. So let's go, Kevin. So there's a pump here that the town has used for water for a number of years. It has since stopped working. We're the first ones down here in about 15 years to see why it's not working. It could be out of water, the pump could be bad, but we're the first to put lights on this in at least 15 years. So wow, look at this. Here's, here's the old original pump right here. Wow, look at that, you're right. Wow. Reciprocating pump, three cylinder reciprocating pump, and yeah. So, where's the water coming from? That's the question. We haven't gotten quite there yet. Okay, well, that's we, a, yeah, I agree. That's there isn't a terribly large pump. This thing is pretty poorly. It was this like five, ten horsepower motor. Hmm, this is interesting. Remember, you like five horsepower, like actually meant something. <laughs> so it's uh, wow, you got lucky on that one, John. It's a five horsepower, two twenty volt motor. That one there is not close to five horsepower. Correct. This, well, I know old motors are rate, seem to be rated very conservatively, like that, way more torque than like a brand new motor you buy now. Doesn't look good. So, the water line is going this direction. <laughs> And no water. The thing is, how much flow do you have? Oh, is there water? There is water. Wow. Oh, I bet there's a pusher here. Wow. A pusher pump. Oh, you mean like a like a pre pump or whatever? Yeah, a lift pump or whatever. No way. Huh. So there's water. Huh. And after all this year, these years, it doesn't come any higher than this. It just stays there. Wow. I didn't expect to see this. In fact, when I, if I was going to do that, I would probably radio locate it. That's how you would do it. You'd radio locate it. Well, there you go. I'm going to have a bunch of pictures. I can't out. Do you want to try some of that delicious out. water? Anybody? Who's first? So, do you want to walk that ramp of death? Yeah. Except you realize you're gonna have a really shitty time if you fall in that. Oh yeah, virtually. yeah. It's not that deep, but it's yeah. No, but the hypothermia factor getting out. Fuck no, that. Water's probably not very warm. Well, you're gonna be soaked for the next five hours. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a thing. Okay. Okay. Here I am at the bottom of the shaft. It's 900 level. Pretty cool sign right here. Bell sign found Ooh, some more carabiners there. I'll add that to my pile of other pieces of gear. A little bit of rotted wood and some collapse right here at the beginning. Uh, there looks to be a or skip like a yeah maybe a skip button. We have a drift going that way, and we have drift going that way, and a sign marking the way out as being down this drift, but I highly doubt that. Okay, so I just got down to the bottom of the 900 foot level, went down one of the drifts, just split into three. That's the end of one of them. It's just dead ends down there. So here we are coming back down. Now I'm coming up to that three-way intersection. Some more line graffiti. Mine has more graffiti in it 
than I think I've ever seen. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so four-way intersection. Some more. That's back to the main shaft. Oops. Oops, the water dripping on my head right now. So we have water down here. Looks like a bunch of rusty track. Everything's very, very corroded. Not much down here. A lot of rotted timbers. Everything that's metal is rusted. Everything that is wood is practically powder. And here we have a collapse into that drift. So let's go back. I'll shut off the video until I get back to that three-way intersection. Okay, I'm back at the four-way intersection. That's the one with the track. Some more mine graffiti right there. Okay, so now we're going to go this way. These tunnels are pretty wet. A lot of moisture dripping from the ceiling. The track is very rusted. This one looks like it's hitting drier ground. Things just dried out a little bit. Different geology in here. Some collapse. Alright, we're back into the wet part of the mine. Once again, terminates. Oh, maybe not. Some collapse. Uh, let me take a look. Okay, I'm back at the four-way intersection. That little collapse I was looking at, that dead-ended with more collapse right around the corner. So I'm going back down the drift, back to the bottom of the shaft. Um, quite a bit of old miners graffiti on this wall right here that I'm coming up to. Quite a bit. So here we are. Now we're just getting into extensive amounts of writing on the walls here. Uh, dates 1931. I've seen in the 20s. A lot of drawings too. 1929. A lot of names. There's a 1889. Looks like a I don't know a Chinese symbol or something like that. And then uh, I'll be back out here in the main shaft station here. Badly rotted. All the timbers are pretty much just crushed. If you step on them, they just crush into powder. And there's the station going up. All right, so this is all stuff that's fallen down this so, shaft. I left the, the battery to the radio down there because it was all broken. And I didn't want uh, to... That's probably hazmat. Yeah, nasty. that's like hazmat. Like you ever let a fire in your pack? Wow. All right, so what do we have of Kurt's? All right, so let me get my brake bar rack out so we don't... So, this is this is mine, okay? That's mine. All right, so... Uh -huh. Take your mask off, dude. Um, a radio mic. Oh, all right. I need one of those. Perfect. Uh-huh. Sweet. A uh, survival bivy. Hey, all right. Sweet. Could use that. Um, Stacy could have used that before yeah. he pitched out. A backpack with... Oh, that's like the other half that fell, that tore apart. That's the other yeah. half of the backpack. Yeah, there's right. a beanie. Sweet. 
some pressic cord and yeah. <coughs> some stuff like that. And a bunch of snacky bars here. Mmm, more mold. These ones look intact, Foxy. You might want to have some of those hand warmers, some power bars. Uh, now that one's half eaten. That one might not be good. Yep. Uh, I don't know if he was sick that day he was down here, but... It's um, sick in the head. Probably it is. Yeah, let's see. Is there anything else in here? Where's the radio? That's in my, my bag of goods still. What's in here? We're gonna learn more something we didn't want to know about this guy probably. Yeah, like, it looks like that's apartment. just like a little extra. That's pocket. a cover for the bag. Okay, yeah. so that's another thing. Um, so I'm not done yet. Mm -hmm. uh, Some gravel. Good. I, I did manage to pull this bar out too. I saw this down there. Uh, we got another bar. The homeboy was pretty into the power bars, wasn't he? Uh, there's a little hose. Oh, here that, that, came, that went to that camelback uh -huh. that I recovered like at 800 or whatever. Was a, uh, yeah. ATC? Yeah, an old school um, Chenard ATC. Chenard ATC? Yeah. Wow. Or non lockings. Uh, he uses, dude, was he connecting his vertical gear with non locking? That might be Wi Fi. Another, kind of sounds so, that way. Another Chenard Beaner. Um, no, he, he wasn't. A couple of Liberty Mountains. Angel wouldn't have let that happen. Yeah, that's quite true. And then one smashed body of a radio. Hey, all right. Sweet. Oh, wow. Warranty return. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. Sweet. No uh, micro traction. Couldn't find it. And no flashlight. <coughs> Wasn't it a silver flashlight? Well, that flashlight we found at 550, was that? That's um, Robert's. Okay, so we're going to bring that back to him. Oh, yeah. so you found his flashlight. Okay. We found Robert's flashlight. Okay. It still worked, too. Yeah, I couldn't find the micro oh. traction. Mm. Can we set? I'd like to, like... Take a picture of all his shit. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Right on. All right, we're gonna we're gonna crack open a Crystal Pepsi here. I got a few of these left. Why don't we do it? Put and, your phone back there. And uh, nah, man. We're all gonna take it because it's n it won't be centered. So partially produced <laughs> with genetic engineering. See, that's how that's how we know it's not old. Is it's partial? Did, did you get that on eBay or something? Oh gosh. No, no, no. This is that's all right. Let it. Yeah. It's like Zima. They brought it back. Cheers, guys. Thanks for being a part of this trip. Cheers. Oh, that's amazing. You remember that flavor? Yeah, it's like Diet Pepsi, but not as good. <laughs> <It's> 69, <laughs> 69 grams, of grams of sugar. That's, Do you want to take a swig? Oh, fairly no, I don't want to be in it. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get the label in there for you. There you go. My. Oh, yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, so we're. No, I'm okay. I had my share. You know, All right, so. Norman is. Yeah. Normaning. You're not using your ASAP, are you? Yeah. Why don't I just use a. Your... Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying this out. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, sorry. Go ahead. <clears throat> So this is a 700 level, we're done here. Hello? And um, I'm gonna light it up over here. Basically there's cave-ins. These are big levels, but they're just caved everywhere as you can see. So what was the 900 like, Travis? I think I got that already, but- 900 was very wet and- um, Rotten. Rotten, yeah. So, this is a 400 level right here. Oh, straight vertical. Going up 700 feet, straight vertical. Have you ever climbed a 700 foot vertical ladder? So we're getting off, taking breaks. And uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go now. Walking across a ledge with 500 feet below you. It's a pretty thought. <sighs> mm.
All right, here's the 86 level. It's Travis crawling the wall. So 86 minus 900 is uh, what? Uh, I don't have service. I can't ask my damn phone. <laughs> Uh, it's like 800 and, uh, too far to fall 14 or something like that. too far to fall yeah so how do you like just hanging there oh well, that's good uh, about 800 feet up the ground yeah yeah, yeah just yeah. the there you go light it up the, yeah. yeah yeah hold on i gotta get a picture of that that is sexy 917 I don't know what time we went in but I'd say that's just about 12 hours so 13 hours overall not much of the mines accessible a lot of collapse uh, a lot of bad ground, a lot of rotten timber. I would say we saw 15 to 20% of the total drift, if that. It's an old mine, old mine, and uh, you know, the standards weren't there, and it's just old, it's rotten, it's wet. Anyway. Yeah, we're lifting a thousand feet of rope here. Kevin's packing it into the bag. Get some video if you don't mind. Oh, not at all. Maybe ex explain what you're doing as you as you do it. Power on. Here we go. That's the problem. You have trouble hearing when this. When did they convert this to hydraulic? Uh, when Jody got it in about 1988, 89. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you imagine that little motor over there? Yeah. Compared to that big electric one next to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Slight difference. I love the timer on here. Yeah. Yeah. Mile, mile a meter. <laughs> so how did, so that cart would have to be darn near perfect with the level for them to get the ore cars loaded. So yeah. how would they, how would they fine tune it? That's a good question because there is usually a, a mark on the drum. Well, there. See that? See that pointer right there? Oh, so that's for the fine tuning. That pointer is right, and there's usually a okay. mark. Okay, so they can and, fine tune. Yeah, that's. So they use the dial to ballpark it. And yeah, and then that dial there, mm -hmm. fine tune. Yeah, that okay. Huh. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Imperial Type Ten. Ingersoll Rand, right? Yeah. yeah. I like when equipment was so badass it had its own like formal title. I like the belt tensioner. Oh, is it just yeah, it's just insane. Look at that. Look so at that, the thing, that thing right there? No, that. The yeah, the thing right there, that roller right there. Oh, that's just a big gravity weight, isn't it? Yep. I thought this was an air pipe. This is just a big steel shaft. It's a compressor for the mine. That was my trough for here that had a sluice on it with a mercury table. Oh, wow. So there you have a sluice and there's a mercury table. Oh, wait, this is the plastic? Dual stage. Big one pumps into the small one.
speak the word. Here's a hoist which has been converted to hydraulic. There's the original motor over there. Too bad they just took that and tossed it to the side. There's the clock. This is the pointer to line it up accurately. It's a brake. Over here, this is the original resistor packs, speed control. Big compressor. Probably turns pretty slow. That's zero tone. Mm -hmm. This is where I followed a mountain lion in. Oh. This, the front of this building was not here. It was all rotted out. Half the roof was gone. And one winter, I came up to read the meter for Edison because we're on a pretty good rapport. Mm -hmm. So I see the track going in. I go, wow. This, and I start, I got in there, oh, a couple dozen feet. And I go, what am I doing? That's a mountain lion. The tracks are going that way. And there's no there's tracks no, coming out. No tra oh, oh, wow. I backed out just as careful as I could because uh, I've had coyote on my back porch, bobcats on my back porch, red-tailed fox, gray fox. I've had a badger on the front porch. I caught a skunk in the hotel. Wow. And you have a, a coyote currently coming up to your front door, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the floor was sweat. Wow, all that. It was just this is a boiler because this whole thing used to be steam powered. And the steam motor used to be right there on that slab. So, yeah, this was all steam powered. Big boiler. Nice place when it was new. Look at the grease up there on the on the wood but it had a nice ceiling it's a beautiful hoist house mine really rich mine the ultimate tool for mastering fear i've seen dramatic changes take place in the lives of people after they've learned to firewalk Firewalking is a dramatic encounter with fear. The definition of firewalking is walking barefoot over hot coals measuring about 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit raked out onto a bed of glowing embers. All your life, you believe that coming into contact with red hot coals will burn you. One night, you decide that you're going to walk on hot coals, so you do it, and you don't burn your feet. That experience can begin to short-circuit your belief system. 